Good morning. Good morning, Facebook and YouTube. This is Tara with the Painted Cicada. Give me just a moment here. And let me add in my face. Let's see. Some pacing. Sorry about that. There we go. Going to stream. Hello, hello. Let me make myself a little bit smaller. There we go. Uh, good morning. I am so glad that you're here. Um, welcome to Art 101. Um, if you've not joined us before, oh, I've got a piece of hair in my mouth. <clears throat> my name is Tara Lynn. I am with the Painted Cicada. And um, Art 101 is something I started this year just to bring us back to the basics, um, refresh our memory of some of those art fundamentals we may have learned in elementary school. Um, one of the things that I am really, really passionate about is that art is not something that you have to um, stress about. It's not something you should constantly try to level up with. Um, you know, certainly the things that we love, we want to get better with and improve and do the best that we can. But um, I really believe that art brings, it brings me so much enjoyment and the process and the enjoyment in the flow is really what I like to focus on. Um, however, I do enjoy learning about art and learning um, about all of the things that make something beautiful or harmonious. Um, so that's why I wanted to do Art 101. That's not to say that you have to do or you have to know all these things to be a good artist. Um, it just is fun to learn about and fun to learn um, to kind of boost our toolbox so that uh, as we create, we have just a, a plethora of tools to choose from um, at our whim when we want to create. So anyway, uh, we are talking about color started last week and will probably continue through the next several weeks um, because there's so much to talk about when we talk about color. Um, last week we made a color wheel. If you are interested uh, at all, you can go to my website, Painted Cicada, paintedcicada.com, and uh, there's a tab that says Art 101, which will bring you to my blog, and that will have the information there. Um, and you can get a, you can make a color wheel with us. Um, but today we are going to talk about analogous colors. And we've got a little demo uh, at the end, which is what I'm going to spend most of the time on, which is we are going to recreate Starry Night with an analogous color palette. Um, so I think that's going to be kind of fun. And there should be a printable available in the link with this video. If you want the printable, I'm going to go ahead and draw it. Starry Night is actually really simple to draw, so don't stress about it if you don't have the printable. Um, but anyway, what it is an analogous color? So an analogous color um, is part of the color wheel next to each other. So um, they share kind of a common main color. And let me see if I can share screen. All right. So here is a fun little graphic um, of analogous colors. And as you can see on the graphic, um, they're just, it's kind of like one little sliver of the color wheel and it creates a really harmonious effect. Oh, let me take my face off here. Um, thought that would make it bigger. It didn't really make it bigger. That's okay. Um, but anyway, analogous colors, um, whew, whew, excuse me. What a day to make a video. Whew. 
Oh, sorry about that. I'm glad I took myself off. <laughs> so I've got this book here that talks um, a little bit about these colors. Um, they have the shortest interval on the color wheel and therefore they're harmonious. Um, so if you use three or four neighboring colors, um, it really is going to, it's not a monochromatic uh, color scheme, but it's going to really change the tone, change the emotion that you get in your painting. For example, um, picture in your head, if I recreated Starry Night with all tones of, you know, red, like right through here, red, orange, and yellow, it would be very, um, it would feel very warm and heated and bright. And um, it would almost have for me, it would give me the emotion of like anger or um, it would just be very a very passionate piece. Whereas if I recreated it over on this side of the color wheel with maybe, um, you know, these hues of blue, it would feel cold. Um, it would feel... Uh, probably a little more relaxing. Um, so it just depends on what you choose to do, but the, but using analogous colors is going to change the feel of your piece very, very much. Um, and then uh, the other thing that I want to mention is that with analogous colors, um, an analogous color palette, can also be tints and hues. So for example, um, if I'm, let's say I'm using red, red, orange, and orange, I could also add white to these to make them lighter. I could also add, um, you know, black to make them darker, and it's still going to be an analogous color palette. So um, it's really not difficult to understand. I've got this book here. Let me focus in on this. Can I do that? Well, let me remove this. Make this smaller. Okay, so I've got this book. So for example, here, um, these three colors have a close relationship. The yellow, yellow, green, green, and then even um, this color would be like a green blue. So analogous colors are just similar colors that are next to each other. Very easy to understand. Um, so anyway, let's move right into the lesson um, or the demo, I guess. Let me take my goofy face off here. I will show you one more time um, these different analogous color palettes. I think this is a really handy sample. I'm going to leave this infographic up for just a moment as I grab my paint. All right. All right. So let me remove that. Um, let's see. I've got this fun little watercolor pad. I am not going to use watercolors. I'm going to use acrylic. But it will still uh, work nicely. Um, watercolor paper is great because it is nice and thick. All right. So I need to choose uh some colors here um i think starry night traditionally ends up more and on this side of the color palette so i'm gonna do one over here i'm gonna do um reds and oranges just to show you kind of that vibrant um vibrant feel that you can get from it. So, all right. 
Now, like I mentioned, this was available. Um, there's a link if you want to download this to help with your sketching, or you can even just, you know, color on this. What I'm going to do is just sketch a little bit. Starry Night is super easy to sketch. It's got some really basic elements. So um, since I'm covering a lot of this up with acrylic paint, I'm just going to sketch with the Sharpie so you can see it really well. Uh, the first thing we have is we have a very large sky and some rolling hills. And the hill um, is angled, so it's going to be higher here and lower here. And so... I'm just going to kind of draw that um, horizon line there. And then uh, over here in the left portion, we've got this um, large, this is actually, it's supposed to be a cypress tree. I think it looks like, you know, it's going to end up looking like a big flame because we're going to be using those uh, colors. So basically... It's just kind of this big, bushy, tree-like thing. And I'm just sketching. I will definitely make it look a little better <laughs> when I add my paint. So here's our tree. We've got some bushes down here. All right. Then over here, we've got, um, there's like a little village. So just so I remember to put the village in, there's a church. All right. So a little village. And then up here in the sky, of course, the part that everybody thinks of when they think of Starry Night is this swirly sky. And then we've got a moon up in the corner. So... That is our sketch. Quick, easy, um, just giving us kind of some guidelines there. I'm gonna reach for, I think I'm just gonna use my craft paint today. So I've just got some different colors of red and, and orange. And then this is probably as close to yellow as I'm gonna get. This is um, saffron yellow. So if you are creating with me, feel free to choose whatever side of the color palette you want to work with. I'm gonna pull up, sorry, night, just so I can remember what I'm working with here. All right. All right, so let's get painting. Um, the darkest and deepest color is going to be on this cypress tree um, and in the back of the hills. So I'm going to add that first. We're going to start with dark and then I'm going to move towards my yellows as I get to light. Um, so Ugh, I hate when my, my paints get all chunky. I'm 
trying to phase out a lot of these craft paints because they just take up so much room. I've got so many of them. Alright, so this should give me plenty of colors to work with, and I can even blend some of these if I need to. Alright, right, so I think what I'm going to do is add in my background layers first, like my, um, my first layer, because Sometimes working with acrylics, um, definitely want to cover the palette first. So let me think how to do this. All right, I'm going to start with this shade of um, orange here. This is kind of a pumpkin orange. And I'm just going to block in some of this color. So right now I'm going to do my sky with this pumpkin orange. Hi, Nancy. It's good to see you. We are talking about uh, the analogous colors on the color wheel, which really just means um, colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. So we are recreating starry night and I am using all reds and oranges to do that so just for fun All right, this is kind of sloppy right now, but you'll see as we layer, it's definitely gonna, gonna look more Van Gogh-y. All right, so I've got that in orange. Let's see. I'm going to do the hills. This is a red orange. I think this was called persimmon. I don't know. I've got all my colors mixed up here. But this is a red orange. I'm going to do my hills in that red orange. So right now I'm just blocking out color. Um, reds and oranges uh, and sometimes yellows, if they don't have um, a white tint to them, are super transparent. So it's almost totally necessary to get some color down first when you're working with these colors. Oh, ceramics. I love painting ceramics. My daughter and I like to have mother-daughter days, and we've got a little ceramic shop kind of close by that we like to visit. All right, so I am going to add some red to my cypress tree here. Get this color all blocked off.
Alright, I know I'm also going to need some white, so I'm just going to put a bunch of white here in the middle. Alright, um, now the beautiful part about Starry Night is all this fun movement. So I am going to use... I've got a few sizes of these small brushes and I am going to focus on uh, changing up these colors and adding some brush strokes. So um, I'm gonna add the yellow for my moon. I'll probably have to go back over this because I can see my Sharpie. When we are using Van Gogh as inspiration, it's really fun um, to just kind of let go because you don't have to worry about seeing, you know, making everything perfect and seeing your brush strokes because that's like um, totally the point. Uh, so there's some stars in the sky. So I'm just going to put some of those in there. Well, I've got my yellow. And then I'm just going to start um, following these lines and adding short, quick, strokes of color and I'm going to start with my yellow and I'm going to work my way darker and for the sky I'm really going to focus in on those oranges And you'll see, I'm going to start kind of focusing in on these swirls and I'm going to work my way out. So I'm just making, I'm not overthinking it, just adding short, quick brush strokes on both sides. It's okay if they overlap. I'm adding some around these stars. There goes my dogs because, you know, it wouldn't be a live video without my neighbors messing with their garbage cans and my dogs barking. In fact, I would not be surprised if my neighbors followed me and did it on purpose. That's how often... It happens.
working with Starry Night to teach concepts is a really fun uh, thing to do because everybody's familiar with Starry Night and how it typically looks. And so adding these fun little changes really demonstrates kind of the idea that, um, you know, today we're working with color. It demonstrates the idea that color really changes the feel of a painting. So I am just going to fill up this space up top with these oranges. We are just creating this for fun. So remember, there's no right or wrong. If you're working with me, just go for it. As I start to layer here, some of these colors are still wet and they're blending. And that's kind of fun. I have two dogs. I have a German Shepherd um, and I have a mix um, that we got from the pound and we did one of those, you know, fun doggy DNA tests and he was like a Collie Boxer mix, um, which is a really funny mix because he doesn't look like either of those things. He looks like... Um, what is the breed I'm thinking of? Um, a, he looks like a schnauzer, but he's about the size of a boxer. He's got, I don't know, he's kind of, he's kind of goofy. He looks like a Muppet, but he's real sweet. All right, so that is the far back around the sky. I kind of like that. Um, next, I'm going to work on this bottom piece here, and I want this to be mostly um, bright red. So I'm going to leave the yellows out, and I'm probably going to stick with these three colors here. And uh, again, I'm going to start with the rolling hills and just kind of Add some swirly lines. 
going right over where those buildings would be because when acrylic dries, you can just add layers. So I'm just adding kind of this fun, almost like a curvy S shape here in the background. Gonna add a little bit of white to this red color. I don't want to add too much white because it will turn pink. And I don't want it to be too bright pink. I just want to lighten that red ever so slightly. And of course, I'm not going to be able to recreate Starry Night, um, you know, in, in the detail uh, that it, you know, shows up for Van Gogh in just a half hour. But this is just kind of a fun little session here. Fun little demo playing with color. Again, just adding a pinch of white to this rosy red here. And we'll move on to this fire engine red. All right, and now for the cypress tree. So uh, the cypress tree has got longer strokes. So I'm just going to use a longer paintbrush here. Um, I'm going to start with this. Um, this is a lizard and crimson. I'm 
And so I'm just gonna kind of add some of these long, fiery strokes of this cypress tree. And then down here, we've got some shrubbery. I'm going to add a little bit of the white to the alizarin crimson, but I'm not going to use a lot. This tree in the original is very dark, but just adding a few lighter highlights will make those dark shadowy colors pop. So I'm going to add a little bit of this color, maybe not, I'll just use it right from, this is called cranberry wine, it's kind of a uh, plum red, and I'm just going to mix right on in there. So as these layers start to happen, you can really get the feel for what an analogous color palette can do. So while colors like um, reds and yellows and oranges can sometimes feel very dangerous or unnerving, by using them together, you still get color harmony and it, it still feels okay. Um, depending on the piece, but there's a harmony that comes with using um, colors on the same side of the color palette. Now we could very much uh, use these colors to create movement and chaos as well. It just depends on what, what kind of vibe you're going for. So, all right. I'm going to mix up a little bit of light orange. And just kind of add a little more lightness up here to the swirl so that it really stands out. Because what is a starry night painting without the swirl? I could really, I mean, I could layer this and layer this. I could make a hundred layers. And as long as I kind of followed these same fun, quick little brush strokes, it would still look good. That's kind of the fun of Starry Night. You really can change it and modify it in so many different ways. All 
All right, and down here, uh, kind of the last step I'm going to do uh, is down here in the rolling hills, we have some little buildings, and the farther away that they are, the smaller that they are. So I'm just going to kind of sketch some in using squares with my two darkest reds. My dog apparently has something to say. I don't know how much he picks up on camera. He's in the other room, but he's loud. He's a loud boy. So I'm just drawing some rectangular shapes here. Some rooftops. Adding in some black for the farther away houses and then using a little bit of this white for the lighter parts of the town. Not white, but lighter, lighter red. And I am moving quickly. This is a very abstract painting, so I don't need to worry about, um, you know, details. I'm not going for details. I'm just adding in a little town here. Going over some of these hills. So that is our analogous color palette of Starry Night. So uh, whether you choose to download the printable and, you know, maybe color it or try your own painting, I would love to see it. You can always tag me at Painted Cicada and share on social media. Um, I will be back next week. We'll be talking about, um, we're going to do monochromatic black and white. Uh, next week, we're going to talk about that. And uh, it'll be the same time. You can find me on YouTube or Facebook at Painted Cicada. And I will see you then. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. I can't wait to see what you create.